you work and try so hard and it still doesn't feel like people value you or appreciate you. Why do people not appreciate you and all the things that you're doing? In this video, I'll share what you're doing wrong, how it limits the neurotransmitters that make you feel happy and appreciated, and what you can do today so that you can feel valued and appreciated whenever you want. So we're gonna start with what are you doing wrong? But before we do that, we really need to clarify, is it just you? Are you somebody that no matter what you do or what you say or how hard you try, people just aren't going to appreciate you? They're not gonna love you. To answer this, we can turn to an eternal favorite for a lot of people, the Antiques Roadshow. I loved this show. I would tune in to episode after episode, or people pull out the craziest junk from their basements and show up all full of hope and anticipation that they maybe have a gold mine. Many of the stories that they highlight on the show are the really fun ones to watch, where somebody comes in and something's been in their grandma's basement for 40 years and they tried to throw it away three times, and finally they said, oh, let's bring it to the road show. And they bring it in and it's actually this priceless painting worth $200,000, who knew? Super exciting to watch. So if we were gonna put this in an auction today, I would suggest an estimate of 200,000 to 300,000. <laughs> but the stories that I like more, the ones that really touch your heart, are the ones where that's not the case. People bring in their stuff and the evaluator, this nice older gentleman who's very smart about one particular topic in the world. And he looks at it and he analyzes it and says, eh, this is a copy and you can tell here and the signature's wrong and this isn't good and all these things that just make this not really worth very much. I have to tell you, I wish I could tell you good news. I, I think this is a complete fake. But the person who brought it in is happy and they're laughing and they say, you know, I knew that it wouldn't be worth a whole lot of money on this show, but I would never sell this. It is priceless. Maybe it's been in our family for years and I could never get rid of it. Or it's so ugly that it's slowly grown on me and now I think it's just great. We can barely stand to look at this thing. When this guest brought in her collection of ceramics, those are the kind of stories that illustrate that everything has value. And so do you. So let's get to the real issue then. If it's not that you inherently are a bad person, then what are you doing wrong? Let's hop over to your local restaurant and find out. So here we are at the restaurant and I am thirsty. So thirsty. Thirsty like I'm on this desert island and I will drink anything kind of thirsty. We can look at my thirst like the desire to be valued and appreciated. It is very strong. We go in and I am hoping that the server is going to bring me some water in like seconds. I am sure that my thirst is just printed all over my face. It is so obvious, but it's busy. They have a lot going on. They finally get to our table and somehow they seem to not have noticed my obvious signs of dying of thirst. So I tell them, oh, I am so thirsty. Could I have some water as soon as possible? And they say, absolutely, of course we'll bring you some. But it's still busy and they are racing around and bringing out food, taking people's orders. Maybe they've forgotten. Maybe they actually hate me and don't care if I die of thirst. Maybe they're just really busy, but either way, I'm not getting my cup filled. Ugh. This is the conundrum. When we are dependent on others to get our needs for appreciation and value and love filled, it's like me waiting for the server. Sometimes it works. Sometimes we feel all great and they bring me the water and we feel valued and appreciated, but sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes we wait forever, sometimes we feel really frustrated, and sometimes it never comes. We post the perfect picture on Facebook or Instagram. 
Nobody, even our relatives, seem to notice or appreciate how great it was. We go above and beyond to help our family member, maybe babysitting for the kids or maybe making this great meal and bringing it over. And they take the help and it seems to go great. And I don't feel appreciated at all. They don't even seem to really notice or care. Why? Why aren't they appreciating me? The answer lies partly in our neurochemistry. When we get external validation, like likes on Instagram or Facebook, or these big thank yous and shows of appreciation, there are neurotransmitters that are released in our brain. I'm thinking specifically of dopamine and serotonin, the two of the feel-good chemicals that float around in our brain. The problem is when we wait for someone else to recognize us to get that release of those neurotransmitters, it's like me sitting at the restaurant. It's unpredictable and often frustrating, even when people do like and value us. So what can you do? How can you stop waiting for people to value or appreciate you in a way that gives you those neurotransmitters rushing through your brain? Those neurotransmitters give us the answer, so back to the restaurant we go. What we didn't see when we walked into the restaurant was that there was a self-serve water station along the side of the aisle. What? I can serve myself? And herein lies the magic. But a lot of people have heard this squishy, gushy, kind of love yourself and you'll feel better kind of thing. And either don't believe it or don't have any idea how to actually do it. So here are some concrete ways that you can feel more appreciated and valued, initiated and controlled by you. So first, let's see if we can flip the whole conversation and what happens when we do. We want appreciation. We want to feel valuable. So let's use my workplace as a perfect example. Sometimes I feel down. It's Monday morning. I have a headache. I don't have great energy. I don't feel really great about myself. And I don't really feel that people value and appreciate how hard I work and all the things I try to do to help them. But here I am, Monday morning at the office, and my patient is coming in a half an hour. I could call in sick. I could cancel the day. I could say, you know what? I'm not gonna give to people today. I'm gonna do something for myself. Self-care, I'm supposed to do that, right? I know it's good for me. Well, on this particular day, I don't do that. It's too late, it would be too hard to reschedule, blah, blah, blah. So my patient comes and I get into the present moment and I try to help them to the best of my ability, the best I can that day. What I don't expect is that suddenly I'm feeling better. My headache seems like it kind of fades to the background or really isn't even there anymore. And I feel this surge of, you guessed it, several neurotransmitters. <laughs> Dopamine, it's rewarding to help people. And serotonin, studies show that when you're giving or helping and interacting with people, serotonin levels can increase in the person you're helping and in the person who's giving the help. And even oxytocin, the love hormone kicks in because I'm interacting and giving to another person, another being, and that feels good. The coolest part is you don't have to be a psychologist to make this happen. Little things count. Try it. The next person you see, find anything that you can find to appreciate about them in a genuine way. It might be somebody at the grocery store, a person on the bus, a neighbor, somebody just walking down the street, somebody at work. Gosh, I like your shoes. Hey, your dog is so cute. You know, I woke up this morning and the flowers on your front porch made me so happy. They're really bright and pretty. Hey, I love having you as a neighbor, and I don't know that I tell you that often enough. When you do this, bam, here come the feel-good neurotransmitters. They're delivered not because of what somebody did to or for you, but because of what you just did. It's within your control. But what about when you're not around anyone, or if you just can't drag yourself out to go find somebody? There's a fix for that too. Now let's look at those neurotransmitters again. People are nice to you, they compliment you, they value you, and bam, a dopamine hit. 
it feels good and really rewarding. We hear and experience a compliment and our brain reacts. But guess what? You can give it to yourself too. You get out of bed with one snooze rather than the usual three. Nice job, Amy. Way to get up. <laughs> Bam, dopamine. You look for anything that you like about yourself in the mirror. Gosh, Amy, your face is kind of glowing and tan today. Bam, dopamine. You make a cup of tea and it looks and smells delicious. Wow, Amy, you are like an expert tea maker. The secret here is that even when you are doing nice things or saying nice things to yourself, the dopaminergic system kicks in and bam, you feel better. Pay attention to it. You'll see it. You'll feel it. It's especially helpful if you're laughing and enjoying it as you do it. So now you know two specific ways to feel valued and feel appreciated. And they're in your control. But this doesn't tell you what to do when you are your own worst critic and what to do about it. So if that happens for you, watch this video for an easy system to actually feel positive about your own life. Thank you so much for coming today. Can't wait to see you there. Bye.